Hey everybody, Clayton here at eTrailer.com and today we'll be taking a look at and I'll show you how to install Kurtz Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2020 Ford Edge. You might be looking for a trailer hitch whether you're wanting to pull a trailer, use a cargo carrier, or a bike rack. And this hitch is going to be a great option for that because it's a 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening which gives us a lot of available accessories. As you can see, you can see the cross tube from our receiver but it does look really nice on the back of our edge and I think it complements it very well. Our hitch is going to be constructed out of steel and it is going to be finished in a high gloss black powder coat finish. That's going to resist rust and corrosion very well over time. Also with it being steel, it's going to stay really strong for a very long time. Another awesome feature about our hitch is we're still able to use our foot sensor feature to open our rear cargo area. As you can see, it works just like it did before our hitch. We also are going to have a 5 8 inch hitch pin hole. The pin and clip are not included with this kit, but you can find one here at eTrailer.com if needed. We are going to have a really nice reinforced collar on our hitch opening. This is going to complete the look, and I think it just looks a little nicer on the back of our edge. And we are going to have plate style safety chain openings. As you can see, we can fit the smaller loop and even a big clevis hook. So this will work with any style safety chain you might have. As far as our weight capacities are concerned, our hitch is going to offer us a 4,000 pound trailer weight rating. Keep in mind that's the weight of the trailer and the load included. Our hitch is going to have a 600 pound tongue weight rating and that's 600 pounds pushing straight down on the inside of our receiver tube. And it's very important to check your owner's manual and make sure that your vehicle is capable of pulling these numbers. You always want to go with the lowest number from our owner's manual. Now I'll go ahead and get some measurements for you. The measurement from the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost part of our fascia is about four and a half inches. This is important for when we buy folding accessories because we want to make sure that accessory isn't going to fold up into our bumper. Another important measurement is the measurement from the ground to the uppermost part of our receiver tube. And in this case, we're looking at about 12 and a half inches. And you just want to keep this in mind if you're pulling a trailer, whether you need the ball in the rise or lowered position and just for ground clearance. And in terms of installation, getting this hitch installed really isn't that bad. There's just a little, little bit of trimming on some underbody panels, but we don't have to drill or use any major tools. And speaking of installation, I'll walk you through how to get it installed now. To start our installation, we're going to have to remove our exhaust. We want to make sure to support it using a strap. We're going to run our strap from our coil to the other side, and then we're going to snug it down. Our next step is to remove our rubber isolators. I'm going to use a little bit of lubricating spray. You can also use soapy water. That's just going to help get this isolator off of our hanger. We're going to do this on both sides. I'm going to use an exhaust hanger remover removal tool. You can also use a pry bar and pry against our muffler. We're just going to push this out, like so. You might have to wiggle the exhaust around a little bit just to get that isolator moving. And we're going to repeat that same process on our other side. With our exhaust lowered down, we need to remove these body panels on each side. We're going to remove these two 10 millimeter nuts here, and then there's two 7 30 seconds bolts out here. With our bolts removed, we can go ahead and pull this underbody panel out of the way. I am going to make sure to write a D and a P for our driver's side and passenger side. Now we're going to repeat this same process over on our passenger side. We're now ready to fish wire our hardware from our frame rail through the back of our bumper beam. We want to take our coiled in, stick it through our desired hole, and then we'll push it straight back and pull it out of an access hole through our bumper beam. You really can't see it with a camera, but I promise you it's there. It's about this wide. You kind of have to stick your hand in through here and you'll feel it. We'll push that coil wire in and pull it out on the other side. You want to make sure to keep the bottom part exposed. That way we don't lose our coil wire in our frame. It can be kind of tricky just with the angles here. Then we can pull our fish wire through both sides. And again, you want to make sure to leave this side exposed. Now we can take our spacer block, slide it onto our fish wire, and then thread it on our carriage bolt. Now we want to make sure to hold the other side of our pull wire, push our spacer block in, and again it is kind of tough just with the angles back here in our bumper beam. You might have to finagle the spacer block a little bit just to get it to fit through the hole, and you'll have to pull the or push 
the carriage bolt up in, and then we'll pull this through. We'll repeat that same process for this hole here. There's gonna be two holes on the side here. We're gonna be using the hole farthest back. We can go ahead and pull our fish wire through the same way that we did the bottom ones. With our last carriage bolt pulled through, we're actually gonna push this back into our frame rail. That's gonna allow us to lift our hitch up into place. We're gonna add our hardware the exact same way on our driver's side. Our instructions are gonna tell us to trim this back, but on our particular model, we don't have to, as the center body panel is kinda already cut here for our hardware to fit through. I went ahead and put our body panel back into place. We're gonna go ahead and mark where we need to trim. Our instructions don't really tell us where to trim, but on this model, there is a hole for our hardware to fit through, so we're not gonna have to trim out on our frame rail. We're actually gonna draw a line straight down this way and trim off this corner just so our hitch can hang down and our body panel can still be up there. We can go ahead, pull our body panel back out, and then trim out this portion I have marked. To trim out this portion, this plastic's pretty thin, so you can use a pocket knife or some tin snips like I'm gonna use, or a Dremel tool if you have that handy as well. I went ahead and trimmed this out. I'm gonna take a pocket knife and just kinda clean up these edges to make it look a little nicer. We can go ahead and put our body panel back in place. We're gonna take the fish wire on our forwardmost bolt, put it through the big hole here, and we'll have to slide this in. Put this back on. Make sure it clears our frame rail and our hardware. In this case, it does. So we can reinstall our two 10 millimeter bolts and our 7 32nd screws. Now with an extra set of hands, we can go ahead and lift our hitch into place. We wanna make sure to fish all of our pull wires through our holes. Then we can push our hitch up into place and pull that upper bolt through to hold our hitch into place. With our hitch supporting itself, we can pull off our pull wire and then add our hex nut included. You do wanna be very careful not to push our hardware back up into our frame. We'll repeat this process for all of our bolts. Now we can go ahead and tighten down our hardware. With all of our hardware tightened down, we need to come back and torque it down. All those torque specs will be listed in our instructions. With our hardware all torqued down, we're ready to put our muffler back. We'll slide it into the isolator on this side like I just did, and we'll repeat that process on our passenger side. Now let's go ahead, lift our exhaust back up into place, and slide on our rubber isolator. This can be kind of tough because our exhaust is rather heavy. We'll repeat the same process over on our passenger side. With our exhaust reinstalled, we can go ahead and remove our strap. That's going to complete the installation of the Kurt Class 3 hitch on our 2020 Ford Edge.